Hey everyone, so very quick video on Gaddafi. I know I'm behind the times, but here we go. Uh, and also, have a good weekend, everyone. I hope you're having fun. Um, so, Gaddafi got killed. My reaction to that is the same as it was to Osama bin Laden's death. I'm glad that a dangerous, uh, counterproductive individual is not going to be committing any more crimes or going to be a danger, a menace to society. On the other hand, I find the way that he was uh, he was executed to be to be counterproductive in many ways. I think that whilst it might sound quaint and naive, I think we should always try at least to respect human rights. I think also that a trial would have been more effective than a summary execution, and so that would have been my preferred my preferred outcome. Um, but what happened happened. And I mean, you know, I think it's difficult to to precisely say why it happened. I mean, people are saying, well, it must have been because there was pressure from the West to kill him because they didn't want their secrets to come out. You know, that's possible, I guess. But it's also possible that these rebels just dragged him out of the hole. And like soldiers in bloodlust often do, unfortunately, which is why you should really not have soldiers around if preventable or anyone with guns. Um, they might have just shot him because they were angry at him. Um, I don't know. I don't think anyone else knows. Uh, if anyone has concrete evidence, let me know. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, this this kind of um, with his death, there was to me a bit surprising. The suddenly people coming out and saying, well, you know, Gaddafi, sure he did some bad things but he also did some good things and we should kind of have a balanced view on it um, and you know maybe and so that you know people don't usually in most of the videos come out and say it but it seems to imply that maybe we he was a good thing for Libya and he should have stayed in power and you know probably the West should have just kept out not just because there would have been regime change anyways, but because Gaddafi was a good guy and he was doing a good job in Libya. Um, to which I have to say, Libya, so I heard the or argument he built hospitals and schools and irrigation. Now Libya has a tremendous amount of oil wealth, uh, a lot of oil money. So any leader that manages to keep the country together uh, could would have done these things um, because they have so much money to spend. Now, of course, you could keep the country together democratically. You could keep the country together with a kind of benevolent dictatorship. Um, I don't think Gaddafi falls into either of these categories. I mean, b big prisons of political prisoners which are tortured to death, summarily executed, in one case, all of the prisoners in one of these prisons, a highly active secret police that looks for dissenters, and treats them to torture and often death. Um, you know, arbitrary attacks on civilians when this unrest started with heavy weapons, shooting of soldiers that were unwilling to shoot civilians. All of these things are a malevolent dictator that also did some things that were decent. Now, today there's also a report out that the Libyan government says that he stole $200 billion uh, from the government. Now, the international community before that believed he only stole $100 billion. Um, and now people, of course, are going to say, oh, that's the international community and the new Libyan government. Uh, you know, we can't trust them. Well, let's just say he only stole $50 billion. Um, that's, you know, whatever amount he stole, I think it's reasonable to say he stole a lot of money. Um, so I think what Bill Gates is worth like $60 billion, something like that. So the amount of money he stole was tremendous. It's not really the kind of thing that a uh, great. Uh, benevolent dictator does for his people that could have gone into a lot of schools and universities and hospitals and potentially into things that would have kept the population happy enough so he wouldn't have had to torture people to death to keep his rule going um, so just because he did some good things you know I think that if we take it on the balance we can say he did some good things but probably he was a pretty bad guy and it's probably good that he's gone now 
then we get to the way that he was deposed and here that's where my criticism really is in this video is that people who want this nuanced view of Gaddafi uh, also want this entirely black and white view of the intervention in Libya um, of the way that NATO, NATO conducted its uh, aerial uh, strikes on Gaddafi's military and a black and white view on the rebels and it's obviously a black view so NATO went in for the oil the rebels are all bought off from oil money and because it's all a big conspiracy and apparently the Libyan people will have nothing to say about it because of all of this tremendous power it's now going to turn into a western oil dictatorship um, you know I, I guess that could happen but that's not the nuanced view the nuanced view would be accepting that we don't know all the facts on the ground it would be accepting that certainly like every time unfortunately the people that intervened did have their own national interests probably foremost in their minds um, and unfortunately there is going to be a lot of corruption and there is probably going to be a lot of people in the rebel movement and the new government that will be bought, out, bought off to some extent but then in a nuanced position you also have to say well at least Gaddafi and his network of secret police and his established terror network are gone so there's at least possibility that things could actually get better and the Libyan people could get more of a say in matters. I'm not saying that everything's going to be rosy and there's the possibility that things will get worse. There's even the possibility that there are various crimes that the NATO forces committed or the rebels committed um, that we don't know about yet and when we know about those crimes it'll, it'll be clear that it was all a terrible uh, terrible uh, criminal enterprise but to me that has not been proven yet at all. I am hopeful that it's at least going to get better for the Libyan people. Um, and so my, my main thing here is I find it very strange when on this one issue you have on the one hand a dictator who is fairly cruel and has an established record of that and everyone asks uh, people ask for there to be a nuanced view about him and on the other hand you have a supposedly humanitarian intervention that is decidedly not entirely uh, humanitarian and a rebel movement with a lot of dodgy people that you might waggle an eyebrow at uh, but there a nuanced view is not appropriate but it has to be a black and white view because as we know um, the West is evil and everything the West does um, is by definition wrong now if uh, this surprises you from you know from other videos I've done where I indicate that I'm very dissatisfied with the system in the West economically politically socially and very dissatisfied with what the West is doing for other nations then that's right I am dissatisfied with all of these things but that doesn't mean that you can just always dismiss a situation out of hand or assign such a clear label to it. As another example, and I did, you know, I did ask this of someone. I went to a meeting recently, uh, a socialist meeting, and it was against humanitarian intervention. Um, and I asked someone about the Congo, where was it? Four or five million people have died in the last thirty years, and you know, the suggestion was, well, give the working people armed so they can defend themselves and start the revolution now I'm, I'm not saying that's you know obviously other people will have other suggestions but I don't see any suggestion considering that some there are lots of factors in there and there may not be a clear group of people that you can simply support and the people that are uh, that are in fact uh, doing the fighting against the oppressive dictator uh, lack heavy weapons and you can't identify them easily and if you could then you probably wouldn't want to give them tanks and airplanes all of that makes it very very difficult to come up with a reasonable solution and to me the de facto default solution cannot be well then we can't do anything we will have to let those people die we will have to have a careful deliberate kind of discussion about the options and given the fact that we know governments are full of shit 
and that we know the f that they will put their own interests above anyone else's interests and those interests aren't even the interests of their people but their corporations given all of these factors we still have to look at every situation as it comes and see if perhaps for whatever reason uh, the interests of the people uh, that are in danger there may overlap with the interests of those governments and if they do then we have to adopt that kind of nuanced approach about that situation anyways that was far longer than I intended to and that was probably my last word on Libya because um, no one really cares much when I do the videos on Libya anyways any anyway, alright I'll see you guys all later